Before we kick off this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more keyboard related content. Corsair is a reputable company well known in the world of gaming and tech for their high performance and fairly high quality goods. This keyboard, the K95 RGB Platinum XT, is considered a top of the line keyboard. I personally don't entirely agree with that as I think that virtually any custom keyboard will top virtually any pre-built, but that doesn't mean there isn't a market for those who prefer this beast of a keyboard. As a matter of fact, if you want to spend about $200 on a board that's not custom, this keyboard has pretty much all that you would need. Getting right into the box, you'll find this case that encloses some spare keycaps for the included macro keys and WASD if you play FPS games, as well as a standard keycap puller. There's also the user manual, which helps navigate some of the unfamiliar buttons, and of course, the warranty guide. But that's actually not everything. Underneath this internal box, there's a wrist rest that snaps onto the keyboard. On site, it seems to be made of this cushioned leather material. After unwrapping the keyboard itself, you can grasp just how large it is. It's one of those boards that just lives on your desk and never moves. It's not the heaviest keyboard I've dealt with, but it is still pretty solid. One of its highlighted features is its inclusion of six macro keys. Macro keys are like spare keys that you can program to perform certain actions. Like if you stream, you can set these keys up for that. This keyboard allows you to switch them from the stock G macro keys to these blue S macro keys, which add that pop of color. These keys keycaps are made of ABS plastic as opposed to the PBT plastic of every other keycap on this board. Though they look like they're rubbery to the touch, they are actually just engraved that way and are rather hard and especially plasticky feeling. As mentioned earlier, there's an option to swap out the WASD keys with keys that are similar feeling to the macro keys, only they include angling that makes your gaming experience more natural and comfortable. They don't stick out in an ugly way, and I think it's a cool customization element included by Corsair. Now, this included wrist rest, which has a soft leather-esque top with a cushion underneath, is actually very lightweight and hollow feeling. It attaches and detaches quite easily with a small and secure click. I like it more than wrist rests of a harder material as it's sort of like a plush pillow for your wrists as you type. For me, my wrists constantly feel strained, so I highly appreciate the inclusion of this wrist rest. Another reason this keyboard is not really designed to be traveled with is the fact that its cable is non-detachable. The cable itself, however, is heavy duty for sure. I mean, it's maybe two times the thickness of what I'm used to. Not only is there its immense thickness, but it has two USB connections. Only one is necessary to boot up the keyboard, but the other acts as a USB pass-through connector. The design on the bottom of the board is a clean X, which helps manage the cables that slide under the keyboard. The bottom also has these huge rubber feet to prevent sliding, and one level angle adjusters. The original angle of the board is fairly shallow. I've noticed that the low profile boards tend to keep their angles less steep, which can be good or bad depending on what you like. In terms of the profile of this board, it is pretty much low profile except for the top where it angles upward making it so the key switches are non-visible from this angle. However, from every other angle, this is a low profile board through and through, which is not unsurprising for a gaming keyboard. A few features I appreciate are these buttons on the forehead for profile switching, brightness, and windows lock. I also appreciate the caps lock indicator. On the other side, we have the super smooth volume knob to adjust your volume. There's no tactility or resistance with the switching of volume levels, which would have been nice. Rather, it is a smooth scrolling experience. There are also the dedicated media keys, which you can fast forward, rewind, pause, and play your YouTube videos or movies or anything else of that nature. Moving on to the font of the keyboard. I mean, it's not the most professional looking like Razer, but its gamer vibes are a lot more subtle than say a Red Dragon keyboard. One general complaint is that the bottom row of keycaps are not a standard size. So even if you wanted to change the keycaps, you would not be able to find a set that fits Corsair's weird layout. In general though, the fact that the keycaps are double shot allowing the RGB to shine through is a good design choice. The legends are also very clear and readable with the RGB present. And the fact that the keycaps are of thick PBT plastic makes the keyboard much more durable and clean to use. Now, the spacebar is a controversial choice by Corsair as not everyone likes the textured diamond look, but I absolutely love it. 
The way the design can be seen with the light reflecting off of it and just the fact that it's unique appeals to me and probably any other enthusiast out there who is considering buying this board. Underneath the keycaps can be a variety of switches of your choice. In my case, I have the Speed Silver switches, which are super lightweight linears. Here's how they sound. They're a little scratchy since they're not lubed, and you can see some slight stem wobble here. Essentially, you can expect what you would of any stock cherry switches. Obviously, the color of a switch does not really matter as much as the feel, but in terms of these speed silvers, I can appreciate that they're not a bright color since the board is low profile, and their color is not too distracting from under the keycaps. At this point, I really wanted to understand the body of the board, so I started to take it apart, starting with removing the keycaps. From there, I unscrewed everything in hopes to catch a glimpse of the case by itself. That unfortunately did not happen, as there is a hidden screw in the forehead somewhere, but I was able to pry it open enough to see that the plastic case is very hollow in the inside, and if you're not afraid to get in there, applying case foam could really be beneficial, as you can hear that it sounds fairly empty. I also got a good look at the brushed aluminum plate, and it's already picking up marks and fingerprints, so that's definitely something to be mindful of. In terms of the stabilizers, these are pretty bad. They're not even factory lubed, so you'll surely hear and feel quite a bit of rattle with the spacebar and modifier keys. The thing that aesthetically brings this keyboard together is the RGB shine through on the top of the keyboard. This feature is pretty unique and the extra color can elevate the look of your setup. The RGB shines through smoothly and it seems frosted, so there's no annoying glare in your eyes. I don't necessarily like this Corsair branding on the top of the keyboard. Not only is it an eyesore, but it also smudges with ease. The keyboard comes in at 2 pounds, 10.4 ounces. Not light, but that's expected from a board of this size. I mean, it's huge. Not only width-wise, but also in terms of depth. Corsair offers this software that you can find and download from their website for your specific keyboard model. There you can mess with the RGB and macro key settings, but keep in mind that the program takes up some space on your computer. And now for the sound test. Overall, this keyboard does have it all, strictly in terms of functionality. It is compatible with every operating system, it has extra macros, some cool knobs for volume, media control, a nice wrist rest, and fully customizable RGB. However, it costs close to $200, and your typing experience is not as good as it could be if you were using a custom keyboard. With that in mind, for a gaming keyboard, it does have the PBT keycaps, and it is one of those keyboards that will just sit on your desk and you'll never have to worry about it not fulfilling your needs. As you may with a custom keyboard that's missing dedicated keys. If you're looking for a solid, complete, huge keyboard, then go for it. If not, maybe explore some of your other options. And th at the end of the day, it all comes down to preference. Hope this video helped and be sure to subscribe for more keyboard related content.